front. OK, um, as much as I'd love to go on doing numerical reasoning items all evening, I think it's time to come on to abstract reasoning. Now, these are quite fun if you're of a, of a certain disposition. Um, they measure your conceptual thinking skills, your ability um, in the area of deductive reasoning. They come in a variety of um, formats. So um, the most common in terms of test publishers like SHL, Savlin Holdsworth and Conexa is sequential. So you'll have a sequence of shapes and you need to say, based upon the pattern that I can observe so far, what comes next. There are, however, other versions. Um, one called, uh, I've referred to here as sets, so you will have um, a set of abstract shapes or, um, and then you'll have another one next to it and that will be your, your, I guess, your touchstone and then against those two sets you have a third figure introduced and you're asked to which set does this belong. Um, that's quite common in the uh, UK CAT entrance examinations. Um, but uh, we won't be covering those on this on this webinar because they're slightly less common. Um, and the other one I've referred to as uh, missing pieces. Again, a rather simplistic term for one of the most um, well-respected and well-researched tools in the history of uh, psychological assessment called Raven's Progressive Matrices. Um, and again, this is where you'll have an abstract shape, but there will be a segment of it missing and you need to choose from a multiple choice options, kind of which one goes in the hole. Um, Despite the fact that we're talking about uh, sequential abstract reasoning in this webinar, um, the broad skill is similar. So if you practice sequential abstract reasoning, that's certainly going to give you a head start in addressing any type of abstract reasoning test. But it might be worthwhile asking in advance um, specifically what type of abstract reasoning test is it. OK, let's uh, have a look at one. OK, so here's an example and I'm going to talk this one through first of all. So along the top you can see that there are five uh, shapes or five squares sorry each with a, a collection of shapes inside followed by a question mark in the sixth square. Along the bottom you have A, B, C, D and E and your task is to say what one comes next based upon uh, the sequence that I can see. So let's take, um, let's just talk through what's happening here. So first of all, the first rule that you can see seems to be that this circle is moving down the line. So in that final box with a question mark, you would not expect to see that circle um, up the top. That would be very easy as one of the multiple choice options. And you can see that we've not been that nice to you in the options A to E. We have, however, got one option, option D where the circle stays in the same place as the fifth one in the sequence along the top. Now, based upon that first rule, it's fairly safe to say um, that option D can be ruled out because there's no indication so far that shapes tend to stop partway through their sequence. OK, the next rule is that the circle appears to be shrinking, so it's getting smaller and it seems to be getting smaller by a consistent amount each time. So um, looking along the multiple choice options, you can see that um, option B, the figures stayed exactly the same. So that would be ruled out. You can also see that um, option C can be ruled out because it's remained stationary, even though it has got smaller. So your final choice is between option A and option E. Then it's a case of saying, well, what one looks more likely? Looking at the scale of the jump each time as that circle gets smaller and smaller, what does it look more, like to, more likely to end up as? Option A or option E? Now, the correct answer in this particular instance is option A, because it's, uh, it's just got a slightly smaller, which seems to be the broad rule, whereas the jump to E is perhaps uh, that's almost like a halving completely of the circle size. So that would be a little bit of a jump. So you can see that uh, some degree of visual acuity is required. If you do use reading glasses, make sure you bring them along on the day. And um, 
that's the process that we just went through there is the process to adopt. Look out for rules. There will be multiple rules governing these sequences. Pick them out one at a time and rule out answers that don't follow them. Right, let's give you a go. Okay, take a moment just to have a go at this sequence. What comes next in this sequence? A, B, C, D or E? Okay, I'll be back in a moment. OK, um, hopefully that's given you enough time. I was thinking it almost looks like a, a rolling Christmas pudding to put you in the uh, festive spirit um, whilst completing the, uh, the psychometric assessment. Um, so let's let's take each rule in turn. Now, um, again, there's no right answer in which uh, order you might identify these rules. But um, one of the rules is certainly the number of lines or the number of stairs that you can see appearing in the in the um, circles each time. So if I just go back a slide, um, you can see it goes from, uh, let's say, one pointy bit on the left in the very first sequence to two pointy bits to three pointy bits to four pointy bits to five pointy bits. Technical term, pointy bit. Um, so the next one in the sequence would logically be one with six pointy bits. So it's a case of going through each of those options and saying, right, which of them has six? The other rule that seems to be changing is the number of squares up in that top right hand corner. So looking at the sequence, then we have one square in the top right hand corner, then we have three, then we have two, then we have four, then we have three. So what one's likely to come next? Well, it seems to be going um, one to three, then down one, and then up to four, and down one and then up to five. So you'd, you're expecting to see five squares up in that top right hand corner. So again, you can eliminate any that don't have five in the top right hand corner. And then finally, that little um, cherry on the top, if you're opt of the optimistic persuasion, is, uh, is rolling around the circle. And it's moving around by a set amount each time. So you can calculate from looking at that figure where it's supposed to be, where it's supposed to be by the end. OK. So uh, the correct answer for this one, oh, sorry, didn't want to scare you there. Um, the correct answer for this one is figure E. So hopefully uh, you all got figure E, but again, if not, um, drop us a line afterwards and we're happy to explain it again to you if you like. Okay, this is a tough one. Um, this one has a number of different rules governing it. Um, give it a quick go. And then we'll um, we'll debrief afterwards. But if this if this does throw you, then not to worry. We'll run through it afterwards. But but give it a go. If you can get this right, then you're well on the way to acing your abstract reasoning test.
OK, let's uh, review this one. So um, again, we threw this in here as an example of the toughest uh, sort of these these questions you'll get. Um, remember, when we construct these tests, we tend to construct them in order of difficulty. So the questions that you're going to face at first are going to be easier than the ones we put at the back of the test. Um, this is partly to give you a warm and glowing feeling as you begin. Um, and partly also just to make sure that there's enough to stretch even the um, even the most capable of people by the end of the test. Um, remember, it's the same number of points whether you're answering an easy question or a tough question. So if you look at this and you turn pale and you think, oh my goodness, um, how am I going to answer that? Move on to one that actually has maybe you have a more immediate connection to. That said, let's get stuck in and, uh, and have a look at it. So, um, what you can see first of all is that the eyes along the bottom, um, the the irises, I believe is the correct term, are moving. Now, what order are they moving in? Well, if you look in the first box, you've got a person that's kind of cross-eyed, and then the, the next person is looking to the left. What happens in the next sequence? Well, both the eyes on the left are looking to the left, and both the eyes on the right are still looking to the left. Then what happens in the next sequence? We've got cross eyes and two eyes looking to the left and then in the next sequence we have two eyes looking to the right and those two eyes still looking to the left and then in the last bit of the sequence that we're given we've got two eyes looking to the right and then those eyes on the right are going cross-eyed so what's happening is those irises are moving by one each time so they're moving bit by bit independently of one another until both those faces are looking left and then they're slowly moving movement by movement until they're looking right. So the next one in the sequence should really have those four set of little eyes all looking to the right. So that rule immediately will discount um, some of those down the bottom. OK, then um, you can look at the large eye. So the large eye, um, if you say, well, what, what's the rule here? Now, you could just say, well, look, it goes left, 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 middle, right. And you might expect it to go right next, which um, it does. The actual explanation is that it's looking um, in the same direction as the majority of the eyes. So if the majority of the eyes are looking left, so is the big eye. If it's equal numbers, it's looking straight forwards. If it's majority looking right, it starts looking right. So there is a logical rule behind it. OK. The tally. So uh, the tally in the centre, again, it's trying to look out for, for what possibly could be the rule here. Now. Um, the, the rule in this instance is that the tally indicates the number of eyes, including the large eye, that are looking left. Again, very arbitrary rule, um, and one that you might say, well, how's that going to help me perform in the job? Um, well, you just need to take our word for it. People who do well on this test tend to do well in jobs that require a high level of conceptual thinking, so advanced roles involving complex analysis and the ability to see beyond the wood for the trees. Um, so again, what rules there, that rules there. And then finally, um, the eyebrows. So the eyebrows are bunk over the small eyes. Um, the rule here is that they're angled in an upward position. So I guess you could call it a nervous position when they look left, um, straight across when they're looking in different directions, and in a frown when they both look right. So that's rule number four. So four rules governing that question. Um, paradoxically, if you do face a uh, abstract reasoning item with lots of rules, it can sometimes be easier because there's more potential for you to spot where they've gone wrong and or, or where where one of the options doesn't ma 